Good morning, therapists. How you going this morning? James Crook here from Massage Champions coming to you again uh, with a little bit more of the gold from the Fully Booked Without Burnout book. Now, speaking of gold, I realized yesterday that I've done such a great job writing backwards here so you guys can read it properly. But my book looks all mirror reverse, so you can't even see it properly. But there you go. That's how these things roll. What I've done today is I've skipped forward a little bit to one of the Facebook sections in the book because I know that we get so many questions around Facebook and it's one of these topics that always seems to get so much interest because some people do really, really well from it, get a bunch of bookings, have a bunch of followers and others seem to find it really hard work. They either just don't get engagement or maybe they have a little bit there, but they just seem to never get bookings from it. And it's one of those things, it's like, Facebook is the favorite topic. Some people love to talk about how wonderful it is for them and how great it is. And other people love to bag it out. They love to hate Facebook. So what I wanted to do today was really just to drill down on one of the principles that's in this book uh, that we talk about a little bit in the Facebook section, in the social media section. This works actually for all the social media, but specifically we're looking at Facebook. And it goes through the four steps that you have in a Facebook cycle that explain really how to be able to use it to get the most out of it. And the problem is that some people don't go through all four steps. They just get stuck in one. And that then doesn't work. Maybe even two. It doesn't work properly. So I'm going to run through just quickly with you what these four steps are. So the first one. Oh, put my book down. So the first one. Oh, I'm writing the right way around. It looks backwards to you. Deal with it. The first one. The first number one we've got here is research. Right? So this is uh, research. And the thing is that a lot of people have a look at Facebook and just don't realize that they need to be doing some research first. Now, when you get to know your ideal clients, when you know who you're talking to and the language that they use and the things that they care about, the pain that they get because of whatever activity they do or their lifestyle, when you know that really, really well, you can dive in and start connecting really, really well with that audience just through the language that you use, the images that you choose, all that sort of stuff. But how do you know? How do you know how they speak, how they think, what kind of images they like? You use research. And luckily, Facebook makes it super, super easy to do research. You can uh, search for individual people. You can look per interest. You can go into groups. You can see what questions people are doing. There's a whole bunch of other tactics in the book as well that enable you to do research within Facebook to literally see what people talk about and how it is that they communicate. So number one is research. When you've got your ideal clients and you've done that research with them, number two, so we kind of come down, number two, uh, if I can think backwards this time, number two is, I call it connection. Connection. So number two, connection, is where you start using the knowledge you now have of those clients to be able to connect with them. So this is where a lot of people do some good work. Uh, the people who are succeeding on Facebook are usually doing this stuff really, really well to start with. It's putting the things out there on your feed that you know people are interested in, that they're going to love, that they're going to stick little thumbs ups on or heart or like or share even. The things they're going to laugh at, the things they're going to find so interesting. You start building some of that content through your feed so that you can connect with that audience so that they start to see who you are, they start to see the kind of things that you care about, and that builds that connection. It builds the, the tribe around you that starts to know who you are. Now, it's not easy. It's not like you can do this for a day and then suddenly have hundreds of followers who love what you are. This connection is the stuff that needs to continue on forever as long as you are doing your Facebook work. The constant connection, and sometimes it'll change. You might need to put some new stuff through in there to make sure that connection works. Now, the next thing I'm going to usually draw this as a square, but I'm just going to go down today because I've been writing that way. But number three is uh, what I would call partners. Partners. <laughs> there we go. Partners. Now, partners, this is a little bit different to what you might be thinking, but partnerships on Facebook and other social media, Instagram does this really well too, is where you find other people that run big influential pages or groups and you leverage from the people that are already there. So an absolutely classic, very, very simple tactic here is to look for local community groups or groups on Facebook that are aligned with your passion. So if you 
Uh, like we were speaking to someone yesterday who works really, really well with marathon runners. He's got a whole program to do with how to manage marathon runners, massage as well as other stuff, PT, those kind of things. Now, if he wants to, he should join uh, marathon running groups on Facebook. There's sure to be a bunch of them. And by being able to, that's a partnership in a sense, by being able to go into those groups, share his stuff in there and become known as one of the tribe, there's immediate trust there because the group already exists. The people are already there. And it's the same with approaching um, other people who have audiences. Like again, yesterday, again, I was speaking to someone who works in a gym. And this is something where uh, in the gym, they're able to uh, promote to heaps of other people that are there in the gym. Now, she runs the massage service, but she's able to just literally promote to other people in the gym, uh, send emails, do all that kind of stuff. And it's a fantastic partnership. Now, this can happen online as well. You can literally just find pages, find groups, and build those partnerships in those ways. An absolutely powerful way of getting out there because those people already trust the page, the group. So when you step in, it's like you're getting the stamp of trust from that person. So that's a really great one. And then number four, I'm hoping you can see this all the way down, uh, down there, but number four is where we start looking for sales. So see how I've put this after all the others. You can just see it at the bottom there, that's great. I've put this after all the others because what happens is so many people jump straight onto Facebook, um, never, never tried too much business Facebook before maybe, they're not sure exactly what they're doing there and they think, great, I'll, I'll put an ad on here. I've heard people get great results from Facebook. I'll stick something up there and I'll try and get some bookings. So the first thing they do is number four, they try for sales first and then they wonder why it's not working. And it's because all these other things need to be happening first. You need to be building the connections and the trust and then you can ask for the sale. Now it is absolutely fine to put posts up that literally say, buy my stuff, you know, come in, grab a massage, availability this Thursday. Uh, I'm a specialist in this, I'd love to see you. Uh, click here to book. Those kind of things are really, really great to have on Facebook. It just can't be everything, right? It's gotta be part of the system. So what I want you to do is have a look at how you are managing your Facebook feed. Literally scroll back through Facebook and have a look. Have you done your research? Are you doing connection posts? Are you leveraging partnerships? Are you using groups and other people? And are you asking for sales as well? And when you look back at your feed, it can become really, really clear just by looking at your own stuff there. Oh, geez, I've been doing heaps of connection. That's great. That's number two. But I haven't been doing any of this other stuff. Or oh, all I'm doing is number four. That's why I'm not getting any sales. These kind of things can be exactly uh, used to diagnose why things aren't working. That's it for this morning, really quick one. Another reminder, go grab the book if you haven't already. Uh, I'll pop a link into the, into the uh, post here. I didn't do it before I started, but I'll go back and edit that now and pop it in. And we've got our events starting this week. So if you are anywhere between uh, Victoria, New South Wales, and then Brisbane, Gold Coast, definitely go check out our website, book in for a live event we're spending the next three weeks traveling that southeast corner of Australia, coming to you guys, big cities, small towns, absolutely fantastic to meet you guys. And I can't wait to be sharing heaps more stuff like this with you in person, delivering these amazing events. It's going to be awesome. We'll see you then, guys. Bye.